this is a quite different view of the auditorium. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I think that uh, Professor Minuhin just provided a nice title for the Yale newspaper. Uh, it could be like uh, something like this. A mathematician and a specialist in statistics confess that indexes and measurement of poverty are political. This is a wonderful title indeed. Uh, but well, let me do my work. I'm very pleased to be here, and we, uh, as CROP, are very pleased to co-sponsor this very important event. Uh, we were invited to the following, hmm? to speak to specific ways uh, in which uh, CROP, for instance, have pursued positive impact on poverty alleviation policy and practice. Uh, well, Luis, thank you very much for assuming that we uh, pursued positive impacts, at least consciously. This is an advance. And the second task, of course, we are conditioned to the second task because of the title of the entire conference. Uh, we, we were invited to discuss as well essential element of the post-MDG agenda, which is something that we have been doing uh, during the, the, the past months quite intensively in, in crop. I will tell you uh, how and why uh, we have been doing this. Hmm? But before we start, we need to, to know what's crop all about. Uh, and uh, it is important to know because I was presented as a member of the University of Fergie, which is right, but actually COP is not uh, uh, an academic program of the University of Fergie. It is actually a program of the International Social Science Council, which is located in Paris and was born uh, with UNESCO and is uh, working very closely with UNESCO from its inception. And now, due to the financial restrictions that UNESCO is facing, for the reasons you may know, uh, uh, ISSC has uh, become uh, a more independent organization. Now, we received the mandate uh, two years ago to incorporate ourselves into the administrative environment of the University of Bergen, which makes my life quite difficult as you may imagine, because I have two gods. One, the ISSC, I have to report, actually I'm coming from Canada, where the ISSC has held uh, its General Assembly and we had to report to our member institution, being those, uh, some of the uh, largest uh, scientific, disciplinary and professional organization, like the International Social Science, uh, I'm sorry, the International Political Science Association, uh, International Sociological Association, the Association of uh, Geographers, uh, Social Psychologists, etc. Also member of the SSC are uh, some of the uh, research council of the uh, developed world like uh, Norway, Germany, Canada, US, UK, as well as of the southern world like the, a South African Research Council. So we're a quite complex organization. We are part of that. We're one of the three programs, scientific programs of the ASSC, that have a mandate to now integrate ourselves into a university, and a university administrative and academic program. That's uh, an interesting uh, task that I'm learning how to do it. I'm trying to read this screen, but I won't success without my lenses. And uh, uh, so uh, this is what we are. It is important to know where we are. We are in Norway. And this is very important uh, when we arrive to the point uh, to analyze our impact. Uh, because um, impact, as they've uh, uh, David has mentioned before in his intervention, is a quite problematic uh, thing for a standard, or I would say a mainstream uh, university located in Norway. But we are also, uh, to add to our complexity, uh, an international network, 
And that also uh, has a level of complexity for our organization uh, that uh, make it uh, interesting but also difficult to manage. Mm. So our mission is exactly that, and our objectives are described there. I won't repeat it, but you have to realize that those are quite a standard uh, objectives for uh, academic institution like we are, a scientific endeavor, and uh, the impact uh, of, of those are also quite difficult to, to address, right? Uh, if you have any tips to, to do it uh, in an easy way, I will thank you. Mm? Uh, this is what we do and we did during the past years. I'm, I'm providing this information because it is important also to take this uh, into consideration when we uh, try to assess uh, our impact, hopefully positive, in the real world. And uh, we, we, we've been organizing workshops because some part of, 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 of our uh, activities aims to provide an arena where southern and northern scholars can get together and discuss poverty in a quite open way. Uh, and uh, we also organize other events, and in all the events we organize all over the world, mm, um, are, uh, are this desire to link science with uh, policies and intervention into the real world. This is particularly hard for a mainstream uh, academic organization as we are that has to respond to, uh, to, to the organizations I, I, I mentioned before. And uh, of course we're trying to, to reach uh, the south and we have been doing that quite uh, intensively during the past two years and uh, uh, that uh, brought us some experience and we were able to bring uh, into our network uh, uh, participants from the south which are now actively intervening in our network. Those are the presentations. We got papers, we produce book, peer review books with uh, two levels of, of uh, peer review which makes uh, uh, our life also quite difficult. But um, uh, here we arrive to the problem of, of impact. And Luis, uh, I must say that uh, I might confess publicly uh, for the second time in one week that CROP ha hasn't had a measure of the impact we, we had in the past. Uh, with our academic activities. Actually, uh, it is going to be important. And at the beginning of my conversation, I said that uh, it, it is relevant to mention where we are. We are in Norway, where we have not been uh, yet so much involved in uh, what uh, is called uh, uh, the res uh, result-based management uh, in, into the university. And to get money, we don't need to, to say first what are going to be our impact. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to say how uh, our intellectual production can have a real impact in, in, in the world. So to be honest, I, sometimes I, I feel lost trying to imagine creative ways, but things are even changing, uh, are changing even for Norway. Norad has just uh, started asking for uh, what is called a logical framework approach, where the word impact has uh, increasingly been uh, introduced in, in, in some of the calls. But however, I think that we can start discussing the question of impact, by the way, I think it's very important, uh, uh, looking at our activities and trying to infer Inference is one of the most important scientific activities. We, we, we try to know something uh, about things that we cannot clearly see, but we know that they are there. So uh, I, we initiated a process to, to infer our impact. Uh, 
our statistics shows us uh, at least uh, our network has been impacted by uh, some of our strategies. As you may see, in 2011, uh, 100, we had 125 members in, in our network, active members participating in, in our activities uh, quite intensively, and 30% 30 30, uh, of them were from the South. In two years, we were able to change that due to uh, the, the places we organized that and through targeting specifically southern researchers in our activities. Now, we're reaching a point where we think that we're quite comfortable. We've been able to at least impact in our database uh, to see that. But, you know, as a, as a typical scholar, I would say with no experience as an activist, I feel frustrated many, many times because uh, I'm not sure if we can, uh, if we can reach properly to, to the political world, the real world. And I think that this is a problem uh, we, we have in, in many, many universities, universities and uh, uh, it has to do with uh, the way we produ produce knowledge, the way we transmit knowledge, and the way we disseminate knowledge in, in, in a specific world uh, way to target uh, where we want to target. So we are trying to use this discussion about impact. Uh, and, and it's interesting because when I was invited to address, along with Thomas Poggi, to the General Assembly, there was just one request from the ISSC Secretariat, talk about impact. And that's why I said this is uh, the second time I had to confess exactly this. Uh, and uh, what we think in, in, in the crop secretariat that is a way to address and to eventually to, to, to measure our future impact is, is to take some steps that has to do with the strengthening of a key publication uh, our book series, uh, to put it in, uh, in a new way, about basically the briefs, which are uh, a specific document aiming, aimed to target uh, specific audiences that we are not quite good at reaching at. Uh, as you may know, um, or may suspect, as, uh, we uh, scientists like to produce books, but how many people do read those books? And how many people in the real world are, are taking decisions or are, are working in, in real processes trying to change reality half the time or the energy to read those books that many times are quite boring, I have to confess. Uh, so uh, for the first time in our 20 year history, we're about to design a communication plan. Actually, we, we, we are doing that, and as you may see, uh, we were intended to, oops, okay, well, we are intended to target specific audiences here that we are not part, particularly these this two ones, part of uh, our target before. And I think that this is extremely relevant. But in order to target those audiences, we need to elaborate some products that can reach those targets. And uh, uh, I also have to confess that I'm not particularly good. Uh, none, uh, uh, neither the members of our secretariat to target the media. But this is something we need to do at some point. Otherwise, the message we need to convey won't reach where we want to reach. And uh, we are going to study the case. Actually, we received a five million grants from the Norwegian Society Council for a project called Poverty, Language, and Media, where we're going to study with linguistics uh, specialists or specialists in linguistics um, how language is used to convey certain notions of poverty and how those certain notions of poverty tend either to naturalize uh, poverty or to create 
a certain notion of poverty that is not functional for a, a meaningful policy change. This is the thesis of this uh, three years research project, and uh, I shall report to you in three years what are the results. But this is going to be uh, a, a, a crucial part of our future strategy to, to impact where we want to impact. No? And of course, we, we will make that communication plan as an integral part of our strategy plan. Uh, and uh, we also have to concentrate in what we call the niches, uh, where we are going to devote most of our energies. And as you may see, MDGs and post-MDGs agenda uh, is, is, is on the top of that, and also structural and institutional change for development. Uh, those topics were not uh, in, in our agenda two years and a half when I took office in CROP. Now we think that, uh, along with the scientific committee, that this deserves a special treatment. And of course, uh, this is part of, uh, of our change uh, in order to, all the proposed change in order to produce a close impact. So, having used more or less uh, half of my time, now it's time to move and to link the next topics, uh, the promise to talk uh, uh, conditioned by the topic of this conference, but of course it's the first one in our list. We decided, uh, along with uh, uh, relevant members of our works, to start working more closely on this. And of course this is a quite a challenge for uh, mainstream scientists but, uh, you know, crop uh, role, if we have a role in social sciences and a social science community is to provide a critical view. And uh, to those, for those that have uh, some critical standing against what is produced by international organization, you may feel that at the picture that is provided by uh, not only uh, international organization officer, top officers, like in this case, but also by the international media, tend to, to give us this, uh, uh, what Thomas called the rosy picture of poverty reduction. And I have been reading all the, uh, the, the, the Millennium Development Goals report, and, uh, you know, it is good news, uh, half of of, of the glass full, half of the glass empty has been uh, uh, provided repeatedly, making emphasis on the half of the glass uh, full. But of course, if we try to be scientific and we try to be serious and we try to be honest, I think that we need to focus on the critical view. This is essential for our job. So. Um, and uh, I, I have a lot of things to do to say uh, regarding this. I, I, I'll try to be very brief, but I will concentrate you to terms of strength to uh, what we are supposed to discuss, the impact on cooperative perspective, and particularly uh, something that worries me personally a lot, the question of the level of analysis. And I think that I am particularly obsessed, I would say, with the question of the level of analysis due to my disciplinary uh, scene. Uh, I, I am a professor of theory of international relations, and I know that uh, the question of analysis uh, is crucial. Mm? And it's crucial for a simple reason, mm? and it's methodological. And uh, when you choose a level of analysis, you are choosing uh, where the independent variables are, where the causal explanation are. And this is absolutely essential when you are looking for uh, a causal explanation of phenomenon like poverty or inequality. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you may see quite easily, in all the reports and most of the work of international organization, and particularly the UN system, the prevailing thesis in the discourse and diagnosis mm, is the following. The relevant level of analysis is the global mm, and, uh, uh, and independent variables that explain 
should say variables instead of variable that explain poverty reductions are in that level of analysis and therefore the success, uh, the eventual success, the half of the glass full uh, remains in that level. So the United Nations should be congratulated for their success in doing what they are doing. Mm? And uh, we have addressed to this question quite intensively in, 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 in uh, our, our series, uh, a poverty brief series, I will refer to them. We have uh, reached some conclusions, but due to time's restraints, I have more or less five minutes. I'll let you read uh, this and go uh, through uh, the brief if you want to. You are cordially invited. Mm -hmm. These are the series of uh, conclusions that have been summarized for us, but I, I, I like to use this opportunity to discuss the question of the level of analysis, the rosy picture uh, that is presented by uh, the UN. And uh, I, I'm trying to do that just to clarify some things that I think are particularly important. Mm -hmm. The official discourse. Discourse is very important because discourse condition policies, it condition your vision of reality and uh, there is an official discourse. Mm? And the official discourse tend, as I said, to, to focus uh, on that uh, rosy picture. And the first part is, of course, that the MDG targets have been met. Mm? That's important. Then, in the same uh, page of the report, 700 million people uh, have been lifted from extreme poverty in this size. And next to that, you have the statistics, the graphs that show how well they are doing, all in the same page. Mm. Uh, what's the conclusion? Well, let's concentrate on the half full glass. But uh, again, this is, uh, those are if data information statements, uh, discourses that focus on the global level, but what's reality tell us mm. that we still live in an international world where states are important, states are the unit of analysis that are relevant to explain how poverty reached the level that reached and where the solution might be located. Mm. And uh, if you say, remember in the previous picture that we were talking about Mm, this number impressed. Mm, 700 million people were lifted out of poverty. Mm. But this tells something quite relevant, quite important, that any one of us can, in five minutes, obtain from the uh, World Data Bank. Uh, it, it is quite easy, actually, to do that. And I did it. I just downloaded some Excel sheet, and it showed quite critical quite clearly that three states explain uh, uh, more than 90% of the reduction of poverty that uh, the UN system uh, is celebrating uh, as a part of the global campaign against poverty. And uh, those are quite clear facts that are there, but I try to invite you to go to the press and see how this uh, is reported in there. And most importantly, most importantly, the case of China. Hmm? This is, I extracted this from the same database. Took uh, two minutes to download this, this sheet. And of course, uh, in 1990, where well, the numbers uh, were uh, reported in the graph uh, voiced by the UN was mentioned, you, you can see this impressive, this quite impressive explanation of poverty reduction. And you can see here how China explains the greatest success at the global level that uh, the United Nations system has been cheering up for, for a while. So I think that this is an invitation to critically address um, the, the, the campaign um, against poverty, the campaign to eliminate poverty, and it's also an invitation to focus 
uh, in the right level of analysis, not only to search for causal explanation, but also to search for solutions. I note other states um, are quite invisible in global analysis because, of course, uh, uh, we prioritize in, from a theoretical standpoint other actors than a state when we are talking about global issues. But the states are still and will be, uh, a, a, at least in my lifetime, the most important actors uh, in the international system. And this is something we need to bear in mind uh, when uh, we are trying to produce an impact uh, in, in the real world, when we want to target those actors that have uh, the capability to act uh, against poverty in a quite effective way. But I'd like to finish this intervention by also remind, reminding myself uh, and all of us the limits we face as uh, scholars, the limits that scientific knowledge face to properly uh, impact on the real world. And this is something that uh, it's an exercise that I keep doing and doing uh, for the last few years. But I found an instrument that provides me with some elements to know how uh, impotent sometimes uh, we are as scientists to produce an effect on perceptions, uh, on misperceptions, and uh, at the end, on the real world. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that most of you have seen this Gallup uh, poll. Huh? Uh, and, and it's important. Those, uh, this poll has been conducted in the United States for 30 years. And the questions were quite simple. Mm. At the end, uh, uh, the, the polls would tell us is the number, or at least uh, the percentage of person that thinks that uh, the theory of evolution or the evolution approach uh, has a scientific base and therefore they, they consider it into their view of the world. Mm. So this is the, 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 the question. Mm. Which of the following statements comes close to your views on the origin and development of human beings. And it's quite impressive. You know, the responses has been quite steady for the past 30 years. And evolution uh, theories, uh, you know, the evolution, uh, uh, evolutionary biologists have a kind of uh, consensus about uh, the, 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 eviden the evidence we have about the origin of a species, and particularly of human beings. And uh, it is quite impressive that a well-established theory mm, in uh, human sciences have, has almost no impact in, uh, in the view of most of, of uh, US population. I'm not sure what this tells you but tells me a lot. Uh, we may have some consensus about the causes of poverty and the solution of poverty, but still, it's a social theory much weaker than the theory of the evolution. But still, it's quite difficult uh, to transmit, to convey the message. And people, unfortunately, uh, act based on their beliefs, on their values. Uh, and that's why values, beliefs, are extremely important when we want to make an impact. We can produce the best data, we can produce the best statistical analysis, but I still won't be able to, to, to reach or to convey the right message, and on the top of that, we won't be able to change anything, because there is something else out there that we need to be aware of. Uh, you know, the, the, the ancient maps uh, had an inscription uh, in Latin, cave hic dragons, uh, beware, they might be dragons. 
And uh, I'm not sure if we're talking about dragons or something else, but something else is right there. So beware and uh, use this, uh, I would say, provisionary conclusion or reflections to think about our role uh, as scientists and our roles as communicators and our roles as activists because uh, I think that uh, there is something important to be at least discussed. Thank you very much. Thank you.